can't believe I lost that first game. That, that first game, I feel like there's a lesson here. I feel like that, that first game is probably like a really good game to like dissect, say a bunch of smart shit about, and then put it on YouTube to like milk views. I am not going to be the one to do that. But maybe someone who is smart, beautiful, and handsome. And you know what? Could do it. I don't know. <laughs> Anurag, I will do it. Let's hop into game number one. All right, let's do this here. So this is the deck Honorok's playing. It's a blue-white control deck, splashing Beanstalk, Cosmic Rebirth, and one Omnath. Uh, the deck is playing Logic Knot to help support the Beanstalk stuff that he believes in. He also is saying counter spells are strong right now. He has six of them. He has two Force Negations, has three Stern Scolding in this sideboard. Does not want to get got by Scam, I guess, on turn one. Although maybe Subtlety is better here. Who knows? That's a different problem. But this is what Honorok's gaming with. This is what we're going to be reviewing with. I have not seen these games, so I'm interested to see sort of what happens here. I was just watching his stream, and he told me basically to go do this, as I showed you at the beginning of this video I plan to edit in. So I don't know. let's go. I had hopes and dreams that like I'd play this on turn two every game, and I would just win. But maybe it doesn't actually operate in this deck. I mean, okay, here's the other takeaway too, right? Like, Tom's got a pretty sweet deck. He's not playing Fawn. He's playing Bring the Light. He's not playing Preordain. He's playing Red and Six. No, it's, it's taking forever. Um, okay, fine. There, there are some aspects of this that I don't yeah. like, but he's got Counterspell in his deck. That's that's kind of cool. Counterspell is cool. Uh, sort of. And like, uh, invite me to party ways. Also, I have Honorog at 1.25 speed. I didn't want to like see the extra, so I started to listen. Let's just skip ahead. All right. It was really perfect. Good. We're in the game. Nice. All right. So, we're really Yorian. Um, Preordain Solitude 5 lands. Notable, we only have one white source, so we can't even hard cast the solitude, although it's probably on pitch cast. I think this hand's pretty not it. We're on the draw in modern. Um, I know we're playing against uh, whatever that X called uh, Harden Scales because I was watching the stream during game two. But, yeah, I think it is just a situation where it's like, okay. We can't really keep this hand because our preordain is having to find an answer immediately. If it breaks, we're in huge trouble. We also don't know all the problems we have to solve. We're leaning a lot on solitude. This basically has to become a white card in a lot of matchups. I think this is a mulligan. Um, you could keep it if you want to be a little greedy, but you're needing the top of your deck to work out really well. Maybe this hand's kind of cracked, yeah? Honorog says it's kind of cracked. He's a big fan. He must really value there solitude. There's nothing good that can come from this card. Oh. oh, okay. It's the Ozolith. So that's a really strong turn one play. Hard, hard and scales proper is probably better, but oh. Okay. Uh, let, let's think. Yeah. Okay. Let's talk about this Honorog. Hard and scales proper is probably better, but this is really strong, especially against us, all our removal. It's whenever something leaves the battlefield, it puts its counters over here. So um, that is going to change things pretty dramatically, I think. Do I want a prismatic ending this? I think the answer is yes. The deck has a lot of two drops on the opponent's side. And two drops are sort of a gluttony of this deck stuff. Although Agatha's Soul Cauldron is something I'm sort of interested in. I have Solitude. But right now, I, I just can't let them have this card, I think. And we're not really going to, like... We could go Island Preordain or, like, maybe Steven's Preordain in order to, like, set up Leyline Binding a bit better. Um, but I don't think we have Sacred Foundry in the deck. So, since we have Counterspell and Logic Knot. So I kind of, like prismatic ending here because otherwise we're going to prismatic ending whatever the two drop is and if it's hanger back walker that's something but like the move the counter Archman ravager moves the counter yeah i i just want to hit this i i think this is too hey, wait a, a minute they just have so many good two drops so we're going to have to answer those later we're going to need to find like supreme verdict if we're going to win this game like our our opponent stack is just going to put a bunch of creatures in play we have to beat the agatha thing we don't have a lot of ways to actually answer things one for one and because we don't have permission spells in the way we are just going to need to find answers and have answers and it's going to be hard to find a bunch of those without the one ring or verdict and verdict at least clears everything up but ink moth ink moth is going to be a problem but we have solitude so if we could go like one ring into supreme verdict into solitude your ink moth uh that's really good so we have to do something like that Prismatic ending. Honorog's tanking. Tank, 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 tank. Huh. I think you just have to I mean, do I, it, friend. I guess we're... F we're not really fine. 
We're not really fine indeed. That's one of their good starts. They're just going to play a two drop on two. Their deck has a million I'm not even them. sure if this is a card it that I want to get rid of. The Ward guy, the Walking Ballista, the Hanger Back Walker, because and we the have Ravager, Ravager, and Agatha's two, Soul we just Cauldron. Need planes. To be fair, Agatha's is a reason to hold your Prismatic Ending, since that can be a real problem in the late game, but we have Leyline Binding. Uh, we have Teferi. Teferi Time Revel actually answers Agatha's Cauldron in the short term really well, um, because it undoes what's like in the pot. I don't, I don't know. I think um, my gut says to just kill this. Kill this dead, kill this fast. Was right. The this assumption that I'll have so more time to do this later is, like, it's bold. No, oh, Agatha's soul. Like, what are they, aren't they going to play a two-drop okay. here? Holy fuck. Yeah. That is a patchwork automaton. That is a real problem. That card has ward. Okay. So we drew Leyline Binding. Well, now they have Urza's Saga. So, like, going after the Ozolith, I think, is worse because they, in two turns, will just have an Ozolith. They basically have it on suspend, right? Um... If our opponent goes activate Urza Saga, activate Urza Saga, uh, search up a Zabaz, that would be a pretty frustrating line, but Patrick Automaton is only when you cast a spell, so it's not going to grow that in a real way. Because if they did that, that would be a huge problem. So we're going to be, if they just activate twice, we're going to be at 17 on turn four, on sort of our turn four. Uh, no, we're not. We're going to get hit by the the construct. So it would be 1, 2, 3, 4. So we'll be at 13. Um, no. 17. It would be... Tw uh, we're going to be at 12. Because of the, the thing searched off it. And that they could also go land one drop or something. But let's say we're at like 11 for the sake of... You know, what is pseudo 11 right now? We can go preordain. Look for Supreme Verdict. If they just want to like blank our counter spells... Um, that would be like... A reason for them just to activate Saga a bunch and trying to overwhelm us on a multi spell turn. If that is the case, preordaining now is a good time because we need to find Verdict ASAP. We also need to find another like white land at some point to cast the Solitude. We do like we can evoke it, but I think we want to hard cast it and get a two for one off it. Um, so that's sort of where my head's at. So I kind of want to cast Purdue now and try and find something and then play my Triumph tapped. So I have Leyline Binding for one mana. Y'all big brained. He's just gonna play it first and cast Purdue's fine. Like it, it's not as good. Oh, he's he's ending the Ozolith. I think this is fine. Next turn we have them the grabbing another Ozolith isn't the end of the world. That's a problem for like me. But it is a I huge. Mean, honestly, it means that constructs with this like it means the binding has. To, but the problem is the, the binding has to answer the Ozlef now, else things are going to get out of control, or maybe Honorok's plan is to Teferi the Ozlef and make it lose a bunch of counter, the counters. You don't even have Teferi, so that's a pretty presumptuous plan. With their holy he fire. also only has two Teferis, I believe. Wait. Ancient Stirrings. What does this mean? I think this means our opponent doesn't have a land in hand, and they have four cards. GG. It's over. Just uh, he's calling GG. I don't know if I believe that. That's what they call in the business a first. So they have four cards in hand after they play the yeah. Copperline Gorge. They grabbed with the stirrings. Oh no! They're playing Hangerback Walker. Yeah, they That's probably just because it's important to think about what your opponent's doing and sort of track that. I think our opponent just didn't have a land, so they ancient stirringed to find the land so that next turn they can activate the con. The, there's a saga. So I think if you had land, even if you. Like, if you were flooded on lands, you would just hold your ancient stirrings to find a threat. And if you were stuck on lands, you would play stirrings to try and get it so you can activate and set up maybe a... I guess you could even, like, not activate and, like, float and have a double spell turn of, like, Agatha, Soul Cauldron, Arcbound Ravager or something like that. Or, like, a big hangerback walker to play around Verdict. So, I, I mean, I guess our opponent doesn't know we're a control deck, right? Like... I keep thinking that they think we're a control deck, but they don't know that because we look like four color to them. Dude, so they probably aren't even on the radar of like counter spell like and that sort of thing. Literally so unfortunate. Did he just say it's unfortunate as in cast oh, okay, wait. I I think your cantrips early in the game, sculpting your draw as a buyout clause, they are much stronger in the mid to late game to find exactly what you're looking for. Obviously they're very good at putting your hand together. And they, that'd have been really nice, but we've had like a pretty good turn sequence so far. So holding the preordain, the preordain is actually getting a lot stronger right now. If we can make it through this mid game, like right here, now that we're on turn three casting it, we have so much more information than if we had cast it 
even last turn and have forbid turn one. Um, so I, I just respectfully disagree. Uh, we've drawn verdict. I should probably talk about this. We have to find second white source. We need to have verdict to answer the problem. We're praying that they just go like make a construct. You know, they don't have any lands right in hand because they just ancient stirring. So we think their hands all spells and they have three cards in hand that all spells. So I'm hoping they just go like, I mean, I hope they just go like play three one drops or whatever pass and then we like kill them uh, by Leyline binding down the uh, Oslo that I think they're going to search up because that's the only thing that makes sense to search up here, I think, unless there's some weird kill I'm missing. But Patrick Automaton is on cast once again. So that's not a line. You can't go like Ravager Sack doesn't work because you've got so much life total. So all that being said, I think you're supposed to go tap your Zagoth Triome look for white source bottom everything that isn't then if you draw a counter spell you can play island if you draw the bean one of our two beans we can go breeding pool shock draw a card if we draw a prismatic ending do we even ending no we just want to hold the ending still so we'd probably just play breeding pool tapped go in that world so we can lay line binding down the ozolith and just hope to rip a white source for verdict so we really need to rip a white source, so we just need to preordain aggressively for a white source. I am... So you should lead on Zagoth, because he gives you the Bower Clause of casting every spell in your deck. That's true. I, I, I like this. We just spent a minute thinking about it. He yeah. took five, like two seconds thinking about it. Just take a second white think. Source. Magic players That's don't spend enough time thinking. Uh, I have him not muted. on top of my deck. I have him not muted. <laughs> yeah, maybe it is. I have him not muted. That way we can hear what he's saying, too. Right. Love on our stream, maybe. by the way. Um... It's very entertaining. Right. Home of competitive magic. All right. Pre Lorien revealed as a white source. So bottom the bean, put the revealed in hand, and then land cycle. Oh, I guess you can actually play island land cycle. Then you're representing counter spell. But you actually don't want to represent counter spell. Because then they might just activate saga. But actually, you want them to activate saga. Because they're going to get the Ozolith, and I don't want them to, like, flood the board with Workers and Ozolith and Zabazes. Although, I think they're going down on Workers a little bit now. It's been, like, a couple weeks since I've looked close at the Hardened Scales list, which is on me. Bottom of the Bean. Draw the Lorians. Channel. Hall of Fountain tapped. Have them push. Oh, you want to you shock the Holocaust in so you can lay on binding the Ozolith. And it also gives you a chance to lay on binding to get out of things. The Hangerback Walker is going to grow to a 2-2. Not the end of the world. If they play a Ravenger, then they're not activating the, the Saga. And they're playing Indar Verdict. And they'll just have 3-4. They'll have 4 one ones, which we can beat with Solitude. We can just race that. So, yeah. We can also lay on binding the hanger back walker if they don't grab the ozolith right like if they just go yeah they just do that then it's fine so yeah okay bottom the bean draw the lorians channel i feel like i have Shut, to take the punch go. at some point though you know what i'm saying Motherfucker, I can't cast this fucking that's just rough we're just gonna keep moving uh if we had shocked and played the beanstalk at least we would have a chance to draw a white land off the top but we do not have a chance to draw a white land off the top, which means our verdict is stuck in our hand, which means we might have the solitude. And I'm thinking this is maybe the turn where things went south. And worth noting, if we hadn't... I mean, let's see what they do with this here. They might just have an Ozolith in hand that they're just going to cast, too. Uh, they found out their Ozolith. So, like, if we had had Prismatic Ending, they would get a different thing, it's worth noting. But, like, I don't know. I don't think it's going to be done. No, oh, Income Off Nexus is not a fuck. Oh my god, that's a problem. Our Solitude is on Income Off Duty. Here comes a Ravenger. Our one good news is they can't go all in. Hmm. Oh, Income Dead. Where's our Leyline Binding going now? Our Leyline Binding's. Are we, are we supposed to binding this Hangerback Walker before Ravenger hits the board? Because Ravenger can just start doing some crazy stack stuff. Oh, that's frustrating. Yeah, maybe you're supposed to binding down the Hangerback Walker now. So we can't go activate Sack. Have a bunch of things. Yeah. Dude, this, this is such a fucking winnable game. This is such a winnable game. 
I agree. Right. You might I still have... be able to win it, but the problem is you don't have a you have a white source on top of your deck, and this is why Lorien Revealed is like you can cheat on lands with that card, but not really because it is a tap like land. Like if your deck needs to resolve four and five mana spells, having mean? a tap land in your deck is pretty big because you have to like right you have to like spend the mana and you get the mana, so it's like you're have a tap know, land. I don't know. I, I think having a Lorien Revealed in your deck is good. You have Force Negation in your deck, so it makes sense that you have more blue cards the boss the problem just more arcbound ravenger tricks yeah right now we just kind of have to hope they go all in and then we solitude that is our winning line Yo, okay i think i was supposed to okay i i didn't know what i was going to do with my ley line binding at the time and that's a question that i should have asked myself so based True. on this turn cycle the way it's playing out well, i'll just ask you guys what would you do with ley line binding here i'd probably hold it for now get nugged for four and then hope they go all in next turn in Solitude Binding. Thank you for not talking so I didn't have to pause the video. I'm scared of pausing. Video's already, who knows how long this video is going to be. <laughs> all right. Hit us for four. I don't think we have courtesy of time. Yeah, well, because we have the Cycle of Lorien revealed. I was thinking about killing the hanger back walker, honestly. Sure. It's just going to lead to a bunch of stuff. You could try killing the Ravager. That doesn't really get you much many places. At least killing the Ozil yeah, makes it so game. some God, crazy so stuff bad. doesn't happen. The problem, if we just had a white source... I don't hate this game. It'd be I'm so easy. I'm still bad at it, but I don't hate this game at all. Yeah, mm -hmm. if we had the white source, it'd just be like... Ugh. Game, game, just like game. every day i get to inject myself into hyper stressful situations just to feel something oh my god i'm a human being all right let's see i'm gonna, <laughs> I'm gonna just that's so I'm sick magic's dope like, just clean this thing up boys oko says follow the, 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 the other issue here is all right <laughs> all right so that's gonna get leveled up he's gonna sack it make two one ones Ozolith will move the counters over if I'm correct. Arkhamed Ravenger will have two yeah, I counters. I thought I could cycle into the Lorien. Uh, turns out, cannot. All right, even if you cycled into the Lorien, you couldn't cast Supreme Verdict this turn. You do have double white coming. You silly ghost, you. Our opponent sacked the Zabaz. I don't know what any of the shit is on the stack right now. Just sure, do your thing, man. So yeah, he sacked the Zabaz. He's going to put a counter there and a counter on the Ozolith because Module will actually doubles the counters to the Ozil. That's very weird. Um, and so now there's going to be three one ones and three counters put on the Ozolith and three on the Arcbound Ravenger. So when the Arcbound Ravenger can go sack, 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 sack on the Thopters um, and then put it up to six, sack, move it there, then six counters will go to the Ozolith. That'd be ten. You can push it on that thing and attack for lethal. Obviously, that is a problem. We have this Lorien revealed. Um, I think we are on Solitude, Please God Save Us, which means I think we are on Cycle Lorien's Revealed, Find a White Source, Play the White Source, Tap, Go. Hope our opponent, excuse me, hope our opponent doesn't shove for lethal. If they shove, we have Solitude. If they shove, like, hard, if they just put 4, 8, 11, 14, we're just actually dead on board. We're actually dead on board, which is a problem. We can solitude something in order to save life. Uh, as long as it isn't Arcbound Ravenger, we'll be fine. I guess technically if they put them all on Ravenger, we can go after the patchwork. And then the patchwork's tokens will go to the Oslo post-combat. And then it will just get one counter there. So it would be 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 from the sack, 12 from the Ink Moth. We should be okay. Which means you could play Beanstalk, but if you play Beanstalk, you have to shock so that you can have the two life up to pay the ward on the automaton, which means then you're like in a really bad spot. But if you draw double solitude, like white card, white card, you're in a better spot, but that's probably not going to happen. So I think you just have to go cycle Lorians, get white source, play tap, go pray to God they just hit us for four, seven, ten. They don't, uh, pray to God they just like, I don't know, don't do anything big, and then we wrath, or we draw another, I guess we just have to draw another wrath. 
That's the secret. We have to draw another Wrath. We have to leave our mana up. Um, I don't think. What do I need to win place. this game? Uh, I guess a white card would be nice. White card would be nice, but not enough. Yeah. All right. I need a white card to win. Um, you, you need a, a white land, buddy. Cycling. If you draw planes here, that'd be insane. Yeah, we didn't hit. Well, that's a white land, though. So now Honorog's actually just going to die, though, I think. Well, no, Honorog can grab an, a planes here. We're going to grab an island and then cycle into plane. No, but that's an island cycler. Ugh. Why not cycle before? Uh, I didn't want to shock. We're, in, we're just dead, I, I think. I think we're dead now. Is that like a 0.01% margin that I could have could have squeezed out of this this very clearly moldy orange. Ah, I love the moldy orange. I love moldy oranges. Said no yeah, one ever. I, I'm fucking Could we kill Ravager on a, a what? How? Are you sure? One, two, three, four, and then they get four counters and then they get three counters. They they if we I'm kill Ravager sure on our turn they they it doubles the counters. Shard of the Ozolith that is a problem. I suppose I'm just dead anyways because... Yeah, we're just dead here. Well, we figured out where we lost the game. I'm going to mute Honor. I yeah, I just thought I had out. a green source. Yeah, if... I mean, buddy, even if you had the green source, you had to draw the white source to cast your verdict. If we had just Lorien revealed, got a hollowed fountain, played it, took care of the Ozolith... We would be in a really good spot. I, I think our opponent actually played into our stuff more than I thought they were going to. So I think that is where the L comes from on this one. Um, oh, if we had if we had solitude there, would we have lived? Hang on. So we, if you solitude the Ravenger, oh no, the, yeah, the, I guess it's the seven. Right, yeah, 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 because yeah, it is sacked. It's ten thirteen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the shard. Okay. Uh, that was nice. Well, that is. The game, uh, I could talk about sideboarding a little bit. I assume Honorog's going to bring in Dress Down because it's insane, Supreme Verdict because it's insane. Um, probably once, maybe a Stern Scolding or two, once to lower the curve. But regardless, thank you so much for watching this video. Hopefully you enjoyed it. Honorog, thanks for the idea. It was really interesting. Uh, I think there were a lot of small edges that could have been done there. And if I had to give some feedback, like it was coaching or something, my feedback to you, friend, would be, I think you had two big problems. One, I think we were playing a little quick. But I understand as a streamer slash content creator, you need to play quickly uh, to keep people entertained. I think we could have afforded to think through our turns a bit more in certain spots, but that's okay. Um, and I think specifically like the beanstalk turn, right? Like like you mentioned if we, I thought I could play the bean, even if you had like tapped the other land and played the bean, we would have been in a pretty rough spot and having to draw the perfect card off the top. Now we would have, we would have ended up drawing the fetch land, which allowed us to verdict. Um, but I, I just don't, like that wasn't even like that great of a spot because then the ozolith gets everything moved right like it's just really awkward um so that that is my, my thing and the second one is really think about what your opponent's going to be doing right like that deck only plays so many things and i think that deck especially meaning hard scales gets the same thing that amulet time gets a lot of which is a lot of game from the opponent not quite knowing what's going on there are a lot of two drops a lot of them people do know agatha soul cauldron is new there's a lot of weird stuff going on but just taking a second to think about what's likely for them to do and I think we had to read that they had a lot of spells in hand from the Ancient Stirrings instead of activating the Construct. I'm sorry, activating to make a Construct. So I think that was a winnable game. It would have been tough. Uh, definitely wasn't like a slam dunk, but something we could have done. So thank you all so much for watching. Make sure to subscribe and like, and I plan to do more YouTube content. I'll see you all around.